the blended video series, is based on an excellent sermon series entitled Blended, presented by Pastor Lance Lowell of Neighborhood Church in Modesto, California. This sermon series is a call for unity in the body of Christ. The theme of this video series is found in the Gospel of John. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. Pastor Lowell gave me his sermon notes and encouraged me to design a video series. The episodes that you will see are a collaboration between Pastor Lowell and myself. I hope you enjoy this production. We at Neighborhood Church believe in the concept of being blended together in unity as a local congregation. Being blended is an interesting idea because it speaks of different components coming together to make something special. The idea carries a sense of unity. Blended is a word that our culture is familiar with. We use it to describe our drinks, our food, our families, and even our nation. In fact, we use the metaphor of the great melting pot to describe the blending process different ethnic groups, races, and languages use to assimilate into the United States of America. Blending works when all people involved have a sense of common unity, and this occurs because we have a sense of a common thread. Consider for a moment the type of blended flavor you would get should you add cumin to lemonade. This would be nasty. There must be a common unity of flavor. Imagine being part of a church choir and one person constantly sings off-key. You know, work is needed to develop a common unity of sound. Consider the changes and difficulties experienced by a young couple newly married or two families with children attempting to blend as a new family. There must be a common unity. The two words of common and unity when blended together form another word called community. And this is really the main ingredient of a perfect blend. We have different ingredients yet live in community. So, we look at our churches, our families, and our lives through the glasses of community. We can't talk about the perfect blend without talking about community. Let's zoom out our focus on the Bible to get the big idea what it says about community. Everybody would like to know their biological ancestry. Therefore, we spit into a cup and send our sample to Ancestry.com or 23andMe for a DNA test. We wait weeks until our results come. 
and we might be shocked by the results. The results either prove our family genealogy or not. We all want to know the DNA image we inherited from our parents. Even though our DNA is important, there is an image we possess that is even more important. We were created in the image of God. Deep in the recesses of our human spirit, we find the image of God. We find divine DNA, and in this DNA is our need for community. God created us in His image, and His image is a triune God consisting of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Trinity, as we know it, is a communal Godhead. So, we were created by a communal God to be a communal people. We were created from a community for community. Deep in our divine DNA is a constant urge to live in community with other people. Consider this thought. The best version of you is found on the other side of community. From the book of Genesis, we see where we came from. But our journey doesn't end there. Now let's go to the book of Revelation for our next point. In Revelation chapter 7, we see a great multitude from every nation, tribe, people, and language standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. Consider the vision being described. We see every nation, tribe, people, and language standing in front of the Lamb. What an amazing example of incredible community! John wanted his readers to understand that people from all different types of nations were represented. He also said that he heard different languages being spoken. What a remarkable contradiction we see! In our society today, unity is portrayed as the absence of all distinction. But that idea is not the unity seen in heaven. Every nation, tribe, people, and language are seen standing in front of the Lamb. The great multitude of heaven was united by their faith in Jesus Christ. Their differences did not matter. They are united in Christ. We cannot forget why God created us and our destiny in Christ. We were created to live in community but is community a reality we can experience today? The unity we see in the great multitude of heaven is not the unity we see today. The truth is, we don't live in a world of unity. Instead, we live in a world of selfish ambition, immorality, envy and drunkenness. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. As long 
as we reject Jesus Christ, we will not live in unity. Without unity, true community cannot happen. Around Christ we unite and gather. That is what we see with the great multitude in heaven. In Acts chapter 2, we see the early church living in community. Let's read. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. Selling their possessions and goods, they gave to anyone as they had need. Every day, they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with gladness and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Notice that this new fellowship of believers had a common unity and a oneness of mind built upon faith in Jesus Christ. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to eating together, and to prayer. Luke said that all the believers were together and had everything in common. They functioned in unity and lived in community. The early church sold their possessions so they could give to anyone in need. This is what a common unity looks like. This is community. A community centered on Christ. Doesn't this sound like a perfect blend of different ingredients. Today, we read of these events in the book of Acts and are amazed. How could such a perfect blend occur? The answer to this question is simple but profound. The early church made room for each other and created spaces for people to belong. The early church devoted themselves to brotherly love and honoring others above themselves. They did nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but considered others better than themselves. The early believers sought to make room for others to join their community. Therefore, the Lord was able to add to their number daily those who were being saved. Making room and creating spaces in the body of Christ is what the Holy Spirit does. The early church spread, but it grew in Jewish communities only because the early apostles believed that the gospel was only for the Jews. It's apparent the early church did not understand the Great Commission given by Jesus in Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 through 20. Jesus wanted his apostles to make disciples of all nations. This command would obviously include more than just the Jews. Remember, the Holy Spirit is making room and creating spaces for new converts of different backgrounds and political views. This would challenge the Jewish-only worldview maintained by the early church. Onto the scene comes a Roman centurion named Cornelius, who defied Jewish tradition and received the Holy Spirit because of Peter's preaching. What would the Jerusalem church do now? 
Acts chapter 11, records their reaction. They were not happy with Peter, having fellowship with an uncircumcised Gentile. Peter defended his actions by explaining all that happened with Cornelius. Let's read. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit came on them as he had come on us at the beginning. Then I remembered what the Lord had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So, if God gave them the same gift as he gave us, who believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, what was I to think, that I could oppose God? When the Jerusalem church heard Peter's defense, they marveled at the fact that God has granted even the Gentiles repentance unto life. Why should we marvel at this story? We marvel because we see the Holy Spirit creating space and making room for the Gentiles in the Jerusalem church. The gospel now was ready to be preached to all nations. The Jerusalem church claimed ownership of the gospel and the early converts. They might have said, these are my people. God responded by saying, no, these are my people. Do you do the same? Do you claim ownership of Neighborhood Church by saying that this congregation is my congregation? Maybe we need to listen a little closer. God might be saying, No, these are not your people, they're my people. God made room for you and me at Neighborhood Church. He created space for us to belong. Three things happen when we make room for people to belong. Let's consider them together. Believing is the first step we must take to find our space in the body of Christ. Without faith in Jesus Christ, we are not able to be grafted into any Christian community. Jesus is the gate, and we must enter the community of believers through Him. To experience true unity within the Christian community, we must make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Once we believe in Jesus Christ, we now follow the path of belonging to the body of Christ. Neighborhood Church is an expression of the Christian community. When you come among us, we will make room for you. We will give you time to find Jesus. We have learned that by allowing you to belong, eventually you will start to believe, because belief grows out of belonging and out of belonging, you will find your space. Out of belonging, not only do we see believing, but we see becoming sprout and grow. When we find our space, we also find our service. out of service. We take the next step and we start becoming what God has intended for us to be. When we find our space, 
we join the community of the faithful. How does the Bible describe the interaction we should have with our Christian community? Let's list the benefits of being connected with the body of Christ. We are to be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Live in harmony with one another. Love one another. Stop judging one another. Accept one another. Instruct one another. Agree with one another. Serve one another. Patient with one another. Forgiving one another. Submit to one another. Encourage one another. Have fellowship one with another. These things should happen when we become active in the body of Christ. Our goal as Christians is to love and accept each member of our Christian community as family. We do this to mutually encourage one another in our faith. So, every time we gather as a community, we work to make room for each other. We also encourage each person to become more than they are now by allowing us to carry each other's burdens. And in this way, you fulfill the law of Christ. When we make room for each other, we create spaces of belonging. And this truth brings us to our last point. Once we make room for people and they get a sense of belonging, then they start working to be part of building the kingdom of God. How do we do the work of God at Neighborhood Church? And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. But let us encourage one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. We spur one another on towards love and good deeds through our encouragement and support. The Apostle Paul taught that we are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by His Spirit. How can this happen? This can happen only through unity and being blended together in the body of Christ. We must make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Simply stated, we must make room for one another and make space for our differences in spiritual gifts. We must never forget that we all are living stones being used by God to build His spiritual house. The more we allow God's building to occur, the more we become a holy priesthood, offering our spiritual sacrifices to God through Jesus Christ. We know that we should make room and create space one for another. But can we dismantle the work of God 
in our congregation? The answer is yes, and we destroy the work of God by our tongue. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. During World War II, the United States Office of War Information used a slogan on propaganda posters that said, Loose lips sink ships. This American idiom was a call to beware of unguarded talk because loose lips could in fact sink ships. We can use this idiom in a new way today. Loose lips can sink congregations. Gossip and unwholesome talk can be infectious and destroy the work of God. The loose tongue is the horrid enemy of church unity. The body of Christ is eroded more by gossip and idle talk than by persecution and empty tradition. James said, with the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse men, who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth came praise and cursing. My brother, this should not be. He also said, If anyone considers himself religious, and yet does not keep a tight rein on his tongue. He deceives himself and his religion is worthless. We build the kingdom of God in our congregation by what we say. Our words should be helpful for building others up according to their needs. May our words be a benefit to those who listen. What steps toward community do you take? How are you being blended at Neighborhood Church? These are questions we all should answer. We are a community that seeks to build together. We are called by God to relationship, and in relationship we find healing. Together we can build the kingdom of God here at Neighborhood Church. Together we can find room and make space for each other.